pregame. Oh, yes, <laughs> the whole pregame. Oh, uh, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to those of you to our CCBS chapel this morning that are in person. Others are online, and then others will watch the recording later. So we're grateful for opportunity to gather together this morning. What I'm going to do is go ahead and introduce our speaker, then pray. Then we're going to be led in some singing and worship by Mr. David Probus, which we appreciate greatly this morning. Yay. 
<laughs> so our speaker this morning is uh, one of our own uh, faculty members, Dr. Christopher Webb. He earned his Doctor of Ministry in Leadership at Liberty University, and now he just recently enrolled in working on a Doctor of Education, which I'm all for that. There's a few of us EDDs around here. So You changed it. PhD, which is even better. Very courageous individual. Columbia International University, right? Good, that's so good to hear. Been a professor here at the college since 2020. He's also uh, pastoring New Bethel Baptist in Clinton, North Carolina. But I think the greatest thing is, in terms of CCBS, is that he graduated with a bachelor's degree from this very institution. And so we are so honored and delighted and thrilled when our alum come back and teach for us. So it's a real blessing for us in all of these regards. And I know it's going to be a blessing for us because he has a real gift of communication and loves the Lord and loves the Word. Let's pray and we'll worship. Father, thank you for opportunity to gather together as a school family. We see across the room and well imagine those online that we come from a wide variety of backgrounds, situations, um, many heartaches, challenges, difficulties, and yet you have brought us so far and have united us together. And we desire that Christ would be at the center of our lives, the center of our chapel, and to exalt that name this morning. So enable us to sing from our hearts directly to you in worship and adoration, and then to receive the word that we might continue this process of becoming more like your son by your grace and for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mr. David. I don't know if y'all stand or if you sit, but go ahead and stand and sing if you want to. Yeah. Get more hair in your lungs that way. That's right. <laughs> Your name is great and your heart. 
amen. That's good singing, good worship. And uh, we do appreciate this opportunity to come and to share from the Word of God today. And um, I see several students that I have. And um, thank you for being here. And, and the extra points. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> You got it. Yeah, and uh, uh, we do appreciate this opportunity to come and to share uh, today. And uh, if you will be finding John chapter 10, I have been assigned John chapter 8, 9, and 10. And when I seen that, I was saying, well, they only gave me 30 minutes. <laughs> and so... Uh, I said, well, I better hone in on this uh, small passage. Uh, I am known to be long-winded. Uh, I'm a pastor, preach every Sunday, been preaching since 1998. And uh, so um, y'all don't hold that against me after the service, okay? Uh, but we do appreciate this opportunity. Thank I think uh, Dr. Corver, uh, he texted me a few moments ago and shared that he was in a meeting and would not be able to be here. So in his absence and also Dr. Dickerson, uh, we do appreciate them. Dr. Phillips, we appreciate you as well. And all of the staff and faculty that is a part of this uh, great institution. Also the uh, students and the uh, ministries, churches, families that they represent, you represent. Uh, we appreciate you as well. I'm going to be coming from John chapter 10, and I'm going to uh, be looking actually all the way from verse 1 to verse 30. However, I want to read verse 7 through 11. And when you find that, let me hear you say, I've got it, preacher. I got it. All right. So Jesus said, to them again, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. This is the third of the seven I am statements that you will find in the Gospel of John. And he goes on and he said, all who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And here is the fourth of the seven, seven I am statements in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Father, I pray that you would bless during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach on the subject, Jesus Christ, the good shepherd. Jesus Christ, the good shepherd. As I was... Uh, putting this together and, and working it out last night at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's been busy, very busy. And um, just, just going over this, it, it, it is a reminder of how good God is to us. We, His children, we that are rightly related to Him, we are truly blessed. Uh, you may be here and you're faced with difficult moments, Turabian papers, uh, a professor, uh, family members, you know, things like that, that brings about challenges and changes and circumstances into our lives. But we, the people of God, we, the children of God, uh, the Lord has a way of reminding us, reminding us that he is still in control. I'm glad that God is sovereign. How about you? He is. He's sovereign. He's supreme. He's overall. He's transcendent. Doctrine one. He's, he's, he's transcendent. 
He's above all. He, he doesn't need me nor you to be God. He's God right by himself. And truly, our Savior is the good shepherd. Now, Dr. Corver taught me everything that I know Dr. Corver taught me. Uh, so so uh, to put it within context, this particular passage, this chapter, Jesus is given a discourse concerning himself as the good shepherd. And he's reminding and he's sharing with those who opposed him and also those who were following him, his deity. He was helping them to understand exactly who he is. And some of them, they didn't understand it completely. Some of them didn't understand it all. But Jesus was helping them to understand, especially the Pharisees, that religious group that was following him gave him trouble, gave him, you know, this heartache and grief and woe. But Jesus was helping them to understand, look, I am the good shepherd. Now, there's some debate over this uh, particular chapter as being a parable or being a uh, uh, illustration, if you will. Now, in the New American Standard in verse 6, it said, This figure of speech uh, helps us to understand that Jesus is relaying a message to those who are listening to him. The problem in John chapter 9 was that Israel had been led by false shepherds, uh, by those religious folks who were causing people to go astray, causing people to go astray from the truth and knowledge of the kingdom of God. You find that in John chapter 9, verse 31 through 41. In chapter 10, Jesus declared himself as the good shepherd. And on this occasion, we understand that there was a man in chapter 9 that had been born blind. And Jesus heals him. And so there was a debate over this man who was born blind that was healed by Jesus and these religious folk, they really didn't, didn't understand who is this man called Jesus. And the question is today, still today, who is this man called Jesus? And the question is, do you know him? Do you know him? That's a good question. For all eternity, I believe that we have to have that settled in our heart, in our life, that we know the good shepherd. Well, Jesus was helping them to understand these false shepherds did not care for this man who was blind, had no care for him. They mistreated him and, and threw him out eventually. But Jesus comes alongside of him and reminds this man who was born blind that he is the light of the world. Jesus uses that I am statement and he says, I am the light of the world. Not only did he say that I am the door, I am the good shepherd, but he is the light of the world. In this dark, sin-cursed world, Jesus is still the light of the world. That's amazing, right? And when you think about this, when you begin to exegete this text, you begin to see and notice several truths that stands out here in chapter 10. Well, in verses 1 through 6, we notice first the metaphor. The metaphor. Jesus illustrates his mission on earth describing two different ways to enter a sheepfold. He helps them to understand in verse 1 the wrong way. Notice there in the text in verse 1. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door in the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. So Jesus helps us to understand that there is a wrong way. And he says, and he gives a method of the wrong way and says that this, these people who try to climb over the wall, it is the wrong way. Then he points out the truth in this metaphor, the right way. In verses 2 through 6, he helps them to understand that there is a gate that you must enter in and enter through. Notice there in the text, he says in verse 2, he says, But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. 
To him the doorkeepers opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own by his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. That word there, know, is very important. And in the Gospel of John, the word know stands out throughout John's letter here. It is recorded seven times just in this particular chapter to know, to know. And Jesus said the sheep know the voice of the shepherd, but the stranger they do not know. So not only do we notice the metaphor, but we also notice that Jesus helps us concerning the meaning, the meaning of what he is saying in verses 1 through 6. He begins to say, uh, John begins to say in verse 6, this figure of speech, Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand what those things were which he had been saying to them. So Jesus didn't want to leave them confused. He didn't want to leave them in, in a fog. So he clears up, he makes it clear, and he begins to explain again exactly who he is. And he begins to explain as he gives the characteristics of three kinds of individuals in verses 7 through 18. He gives the characteristics of the thieves and robbers. He says their purpose in verses 8 and also verse 10. He said the purpose of thieves and robbers is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Then he gives the characteristics of a hired hand, the hireling. He says that the hireling comes along in verses 12 through 13. He says that the hireling forsakes the sheep in time of danger. That the hireling cares nothing for the sheep in verse 13. But not only do we see the characteristics of a hired hand and the characteristics of thieves and robbers, but thirdly, Jesus gives us the characteristics of the good shepherd. And he begins to explain exactly the depth of who he is. He begins to lay out and, and not hold back that he is indeed the good shepherd. And he helps them to understand. Now, if you put this within context and you begin to study sheep. Have you ever studied sheep? Well, there's, there's several things that stands out about sheep. Well, one thing that stands out that's most importantly is that sheep are dumb. Sheep are the most helpless. They spend their entire day grazing, wandering from place to place, never looking up. As a result, they often become lost. They get lost and, and they cannot find their way back where they came from. They have no home and instinct about themselves. They are totally incapable of finding their way back to the sheepfold, even when it's in plain sight. Why? Because the sheep by nature are followers. They need someone to lead them. Well, Jesus is using this everyday language as a metaphor to help them to understand and get. And he's given them the true meaning of who he is. If the sheep, if the lead sheep steps off a cliff, you know what they'll do? The rest of them, they will follow. Even to their death, they will follow. Sheep are easily, uh, uh, easily to be injured and utterly helpless against predators. If a wolf comes in the pen, they won't even defend themselves. They'll stand right there. They won't even try to run away or to spread out. In fact, they come into a huddle to where the wolf or the predator is, can easily slaughter them. In fact, if you study sheep, they do not like moving water. They're scared to death of it. Why? Because they will drown. If they go into the water, the wool that they have gets wet and it drags them under the current and they will drown. They're, they're, they're scared to death of water. So they need a shepherd to lead them by the still, 
waters. And Jesus is helping them to understand. Often several flocks were, were kept together in one sheepfold. And in the night, they intermingled with sheep from other flocks. But when the shepherd came in the morning time, between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m., the shepherd would take the sheep out and he would help them to find green pasture and he would help them to find the still waters to where they could drink and eat and be taken care of. And here they, the shepherd would call them by name. And when the shepherd, even when they were intermingled with other flock, the, the sheep of that of the sheep of that shepherd, you know what they would do? They would go straight to the shepherd. Why? Because the shepherd, he knew their sheep and the sheep followed the voice of the shepherd. They knew the shepherd's voice. And Jesus is helping us to understand. As we look into this text, he's helping us to understand that sheep need a shepherd. And he is, is providing for them and telling them that I am the good shepherd. Notice there in the text in verse 11. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So not only do we notice the meaning and the metaphor, but I want you to notice there in verse 19 through 24. You notice the murmuring. He, he, begins, he begins to explain to them and they begin to murmur and complain. It's always somebody that's going to complain, right? Uh, that's in every church that I've uh, been blessed to pastor. You always have... Uh, we don't have a Sally in here, do we? Always got a Sister Sally or, or Brother Johnny that's going to complain or mumber and, and just, just cause trouble. Well, here's these religious folk looking down their religious nose and they begin to say, well, I'm better than you and I know more than you do. And, uh, and, and so they begin to mumber about. And notice there in the text in verse 19, a division occurred again among the Jews because of the words of Jesus. Notice there many of them were saying, this man has got to have a demon. He is insane. They were saying that Jesus, our blessed Lord, was crazy. Now we know better than that. And Jesus, it continues and he did not let that stop him. He says, notice there in the text, he says, why do you listen? They were saying, why do you listen to this man? Why do you listen to him? In verse 21, they says, others were saying, these are not the sands of, these are not the sands of one demon possessed. A demon cannot open the eyes of the blind, yes. can he? And then they begin to go into an explanation trying to figure out Jesus, the good shepherd. And Jesus helps them. Not only do we notice the metaphor and the meaning, I'm trying to hurry up, the meaning and the mummering, but we notice the message in verse 25 through 30. Sheep are totally dependent upon the shepherd who tends for them. He tends to them. The shepherd tends to them. Why? Because he has care and compassion. The shepherds are the providers. They are the ones who guide. They are the ones who protect. They are the ones who have a constant companionship with the sheep. So close was the bond between shepherd and sheep that to this day in the Middle Eastern area, shepherds can divide flock that have mingled at a well or during the night simply by calling their sheep's name. Why? Because they hear the shepherd's voice. Shepherds are inseparable from their flocks. The shepherd would lead the sheep to safe places to graze and to make them lie down for several hours in shady places. Then it, as night fell, the shepherd would lead the sheep to the protection of of a sheepfold. And they say that there was sometimes that they would take rocks and build up rocks and, and stone and they would put them up high enough to where a predator could not come in. But yet they would put an opening to where the sheep could come in and go out. But at night, the shepherd would get in the middle, the opening of that gate. 
And he would lay there. And what he would do, he would have the staff and he would lay there. And when a predator came, the shepherd, in other words, they had to go through the shepherd in order to get to the sheep. And this is what Jesus is teaching us. He's teaching us the characteristics of the good shepherd. He is describing himself. In other words, he is saying that I have a relationship with my sheep. And he says that I am the only entrance to your salvation. He is saying to us today that he allows us to go in and out and to find green pasture. He gives us life to its fullness. You may be broke, busted, and disgusted right now. And some of you may be that way, especially paying for tuition. <laughs> but through the Good Shepherd, He provides, He protects. He guides us. He leads us. And I'm thankful that Jesus is telling us that He is the shepherd of the sheep. That He is the door of the sheep. That it's only through Him. Jesus is saying, I am the door. He is reiterating the fact that only through Him is salvation possible. Only through Him and Him alone, through Christ alone, is salvation possible? You know, we live in a culture today to where there's so many other religions that teach that you just get on any bus that all of them lead to the Lord. But Jesus comes along and says in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, I am the truth, the life, and no man cometh unto the Father except through Him and Him alone. Jesus is helping us to understand that if you want salvation... Turn to Him. If you want to, to experience life to its fullness, that you have to go through Him and Him alone. This guarantees our salvation. I'm glad that I'm saved. How about you? Amen. That's a good place to say amen. That's a good place to clap your hand. That we're saved today. And because we are saved, we're on the winning side. And I cannot lose because of winning. I may have the, the, I may have the evil one who comes and, and tries to kill, steal, and to destroy, but he's like a dog on a chain. He cannot do anything unless, unless the good shepherd allows him to do it. And I'm glad that the good shepherd knows exactly what I need. He knows when I need it, how I need it, and he's there to provide for my need. Why? Because I know him as my good Shepherd, Do you notice in the text there, the Bible says that he, he uh, for his sheep. Notice there, the word there for in the Greek is, correct me if I'm wrong, hupar, hupar. Am I right? Where's my man? There you go. Hooper. Hooper, which means here the pla in the place of, or the on behalf of. And what this is speaking about is the substitutionary atonement of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That Jesus was willing to step out of eternity into time and to come down here in a sin-cursed world who knew no sin, that He became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God through Him and Him alone. And the Bible says that He has the sufficient uh, he, his blood is sufficient for the salvation of the world. And it's only efficient for those who place their faith and trust and belief in Him. They repent of their sin. Thank God that He allows us to repent of our sin and to call upon Him as the Good Shepherd. And He said, I will extend unto you everlasting life. And today we have everlasting life. How long is that? That's without end. Well, that'll make you shout, won't it? Sheep. They find peace. They find safety. They find guidance because there's a good shepherd. As the sheep went in and out, 
They would, they would enjoy the abundant life in the rich pastures of the Good Shepherd, experiencing the fullness and freedom. Jesus not only gave his life for us, but he gives us eternal life right now, in the now. We experience that abundant life. In the original language of the New Testament, it means to have a life that is full in Christ. It means to have over and above and beyond. It means to have more than enough. And today, if you know the good shepherd, you have more than enough. You may have your back against the wall. You may feel like that all the world is against you. But if you know the good shepherd and the good shepherd knows you, you have more than enough. Because of him and him alone, we have we are eternally kept by him. And that's why he goes on, look, notice there in the text in verse 25. He says, Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. My sheep, they hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. And I give eternal life to them. And they will never perish. What does never mean? Never. And he goes on and he says, And no one will snatch them out of my hand. From my, my Father, notice there, he said, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father and the Father are one. And Jesus was helping them to understand that the shepherd has purchased, the good shepherd has purchased our salvation. He has became our redeemer through and by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ according to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19 and 20. And he has, according to Titus chapter 2 and verse 14, he through his own blood has given unto us everlasting life. And the thing is, the what we have to settle in our heart and mind. Do we know the good shepherd? You may be watching by way of Facebook Live. You may be watching later on. I want to ask you a question. Do you know him? Do you know the good shepherd? He is the good shepherd. No wonder David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There was a little girl that was growing up and she was in church and they were trying to memorize Bible verses. Well, she was assigned Psalm 23, verse 1. And she got up and real nervous. And she began to quote Psalm 23. And she stood and her teacher, Sunday school teacher, was coaching her along and said, Come on, baby, you can do it. You can, you can say it. And all of a sudden she stood with boldness and said, The Lord is my shepherd. He's all I want. And I'll tell you, when you know the good shepherd, he's all you want. The Lord is my shepherd. Jesus is teaching us. I want to share these three points, and I'm going to sit down. Jesus shares with us that Jesus saves. In verse 9, he helps us to understand that salvation is possible only through and by him and him alone. According to Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, Peter said, There's no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. It's through Jesus and Jesus alone that he extends to us salvation. But not only does Jesus save, but he satisfies. I'm glad that he's satisfied. I'm satisfied today. How about you? Are you satisfied in Jesus? When you know him as the good shepherd and he is leading you, guiding you, directing you, and protecting you, you know what? You're satisfied in Jesus. Well, not only does he satisfy and not only does he save, but he secures. I'm glad that I'm secured in Jesus. Now, if, I was, if, if, if it was in me, I'd be scared to death. I'd be shaking in my boots. And I don't even have on boots. <laughs> but my security is not found in myself. 
It's not found in my own power or intellect. My security is found in Jesus and Jesus alone. See, I believe in the eternal security of the believer. I believe that once you're saved, you're always saved if saved. That if when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus said, there's no one that is able to snatch you out of His hand. And He said, not only is there's no one that's able to snatch you out of His hand, but He said, my hand is in the Father's hand. So we're doubly secured. I'm telling you, we are secure today. And because of His security, we can stand the test of time. And we can stand through the troubled times that we're faced with. Why? Because we can rest at night and say, if I don't wake up in the morning, it's going to be well with my soul. Is it well with your soul? Well, it is if you know the Good Shepherd. The question is, do you know Him? Thank God that He extends to us exactly what we need. And He is. He said, I am the door. I am the Good Shepherd. And the Good Shepherd lays down His life for the sheep. I'm thankful that over 2,000 years ago that he was willing to lay down his life. And he said, I have power, I have been given authority to lay down my life and to pick it up again. And I'm glad that it didn't stop there on the cross of Calvary. Yes, he said, it is finished. The plan way of salvation for us to come into the kingdom of God. He says, for everyone that calls upon Him, repents of their sin, and calls upon Him, it is finished. You can come to Him. You can have salvation. You can be satisfied. You can be secured through Jesus and Jesus alone. But I'm glad that it didn't stop there. On the third day morning, after they laid Him in a barred tomb, He got up out of the grave, just as He said. And I'm glad that he's alive forevermore. And he's got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And because of him and him alone, I'm secured. He is the good shepherd who died for the sheep. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would take these broken words, use them for your glory and for, and for your honor and for the good of your people. Father, we love you. We thank you because you love us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Webb, for feeding our souls this morning with the word of life. Next Tuesday for our chapel uh, session, uh, Dr. Chris Dixon will be our speaker. So our string of wonderful speakers will continue, won't it? If he's listening, he is wondering about your opinion on that statement. That didn't sound very good. <laughs> Our string of wonderful chapel speakers will continue with Dr. Dickerson. Yes. <laughs> yes, he's out of town, so he's not with us this morning. He'll be our speaker next week, Lord willing. Also, as Dr. Webb mentioned, Dr. Corver is not with us. He and uh, the college's board of directors are in an all-day training session in the conference room in here. Mm -hmm. The board of directors are the ones who are ultimately responsible for the college here. And so if you see them on a break, introduce yourself to them. They're very interested in how you are doing. So stop and say hi and share your name and, and uh, thank them for their service because it is behind the scenes. Uh, almost always so grateful for that and we trust it'll be a very profitable day for them remember tutors stand by to be of help logos Turabian, prayer <laughs> and thank you again mr david we appreciate the singing that we get each appreciate so much the time of singing and worship we have each week. So let's, uh, let's close in prayer this morning, shall we? Father, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, this great, great reassurance to our hearts this morning on Jesus being the great shepherd. And thank you that he's welcomed us into your fold and we've become a part of your flock. Just uh, confirm that message to our own hearts today that we might be strengthened in the inner man, set forth to serve you all the more. We pray for your grace in so doing, and with thanksgiving we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.
Thank you.